Hello, everyone. Chances are pretty good that if you're able to navigate to this video, you've at some point heard somebody say that a noun is a person, place, or thing. However, as we'll see, there are situations where that needs a little bit more clarity. First, we want to clarify the difference between nouns and pronouns. Pronouns are very general words like me, you, us, them, somebody, everyone, who, and which. These words can be used to refer back to nouns. What makes this a little bit more complicated is that one person, place, or thing can be referred to by a variety of different nouns. For example, I am Ms. Cole. I am a teacher. I am an adult. I am a voter. I am a sibling. I am a person. All of those are also nouns. So the sentence, Ms. Cole is tall, could also be written as the teacher is tall in which the noun phrase, the teacher, in the second sentence is substituted for the proper noun, Ms. Cole, in the first sentence. That doesn't mean that either of those are not nouns, but in addition to using pronouns in that way, we can also substitute one noun for another. We'll get to common and proper nouns in a different video. This same sentence could also be written, she is tall. In this sentence, the noun phrase, the teacher, has been replaced by the third person singular subject pronoun, she. First person, second person, and third person pronouns are covered in a different video, as are pronoun cases. But what I want to highlight is that while there are a lot of words that are pronouns, over 120 in English, there are far, far more words that are nouns, so many that we're not even really sure how many there are. Maybe 80,000? You know, give or take. For this reason, nouns are almost always more specific than pronouns. And it's also important to remember that some nouns are more specific than others. For example, in the earlier sentences, the proper noun, Ms. Cole, is more specific than the common noun, teacher. Another way of sorting nouns, and one that students sometimes have difficulty with, is whether they are concrete or abstract nouns. Concrete nouns are things that have physical substance and characteristics. They can be observed or measured. It's easiest to identify things that we can touch or see, like a mug or a pen or a shoe. However, words like air, wind, and even electricity are concrete nouns because even if we can't exactly see or touch them with our basic sentences, we can measure their physical properties with devices. For example, a barometer measures air pressure, an anemometer measures wind speed, and an ammeter measures electrical current. Abstract nouns are why some people define a noun as a person, place, thing, or idea. Concepts such as emotions, qualities, states of being, all of these are also nouns. Some specific examples would be emotions like excitement, sadness, hope, or fear. Qualities like loyalty, independence, or curiosity. Principles like justice, capitalism, or forgiveness. Processes like the scientific method or the three-act structure or states of being, like wealth, marriage, sickness, or birth. There are certainly more, but those examples should give you an idea of the kinds of words that are abstract nouns. One strategy that can be helpful in figuring out whether a word is a noun or not is to use it with a type of word called an article. I like using these because there are only three words you need to know, a, an, and the. The words a and an are indefinite articles because when you use them, you're not being particular about which one you're talking about. Did you eat a cookie? Doesn't matter which one. Just want to know whether you had one or not. The word the is called a definite article because it means we're definitely talking about a specific item. Did you eat the cookie? This means we have a particular cookie in mind and we are wondering if you are the one who ate it. As an aside, the appropriate answers are, what cookie? Or, yes, it was great, thank you so much. Articles are a part of a larger group of words called determiners. Determiners are words that are followed by a noun. They give you a clue that a noun is gonna be coming up. In the phrases, that cookie, my cookie, and one cookie, the words that, my, and one are all determiners. There are a lot more of them, but if you can remember a, an, and the, you really only need those three to test out whether or not a word is being used as a noun. Now, at the beginning of this section, I said that articles can be helpful in figuring out whether or not a word is a noun. 
That's because there is some situations in which nouns don't take determiners. One example is when we're talking in a general sense, like in this well-known verse. Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. Here we're talking about roses, violets, and sugar in a general sense. A cup of sugar or a tablespoon. Doesn't matter. And sure, there are actually some roses that aren't red, but pink or yellow. But in general, when we think of roses, we think red and we associate sweetness with sugar. Violets? Let's just say that the poem is talking about violets in a general sense because etymology, that's a completely different issue and a different video. Another example of nouns that don't take determiners is words for games. Baseball is incredibly boring. This also helps to illustrate the difference between concrete and abstract nouns. A baseball is the object, a concrete noun. Baseball is the game, an abstract noun. There are other ways of classifying nouns, whether they're common or proper, whether they're singular or plural, count or non-count, and even masculine or feminine nouns, although English has moved away from that. But I wanted to focus on differentiating between nouns and pronouns and between concrete and abstract nouns because those categories tend to be the ones that give students the most difficulty in figuring whether or not a word even is a noun at all. So hopefully, with practice, it will get easier for you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you have questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Bye for now.